Jesus' definition of neighbor, or who is our neighbor, is very unique. He defines our neighbor as someone that is separated from us by fear or suspicion and have heard about us reports that probably depict us as villains. The Good Samaritan in this parable is the figure of God himself. God's image has been vilified. He has been depicted in many cultures, in Muslim cultures, as the enemy of the humanity, or at least as not a favorable dictator. God is presented in most cultures or philosophies as a tyrant who takes away our freedom. He gives us commandments to do things we like, to not to do things we like, or to prevent us from doing things we desire. God is depicted as someone who imposes unfair rules on his people. God is depicted as someone far away figure, someone that allows pain and suffering, bad things to happen in nature or through nature or because of nature. He allows these things to happen to damage people's lives or bad things to happen to innocent people or children. Every time there is someone suffering, it's always God's fault. Jesus mapped, he mapped out through the figure of the Samaritan how to identify, how to deal with our neighbor. Our neighbor can be someone who is nearby. He can be someone that is far away. He can be someone recent. Or can be someone far away in a distant history. It is someone that is filled with fear. Someone that feels that our existence is a threat to him. The chasm that separates us from them cannot be healed by logic or by rationalization. The wounds of our neighbors, their injury, cannot be healed by passing or enforcing rules and laws. Jesus says to treat our neighbor in the very same way the Samaritan did. We are to follow the example of God. God whose image has been vilified and humanity fears him, detests him, rejects him, and he treated the humanity with great care, as we saw with the Samaritan. Jesus is telling us to follow the same example of the Samaritan because these wounds our neighbors 
can only be healed through sacrificial love, not rhetorical love. Wounded neighbors, however they got wounded, whatever the reason, that makes them fearful and suspicious and very cautious toward us and many times uh, hateful or unkind or harsh, their wounds cannot be healed by words. It cannot be healed by empty theories. It cannot be healed by creating or removing systems. The Samaritan was willing to divert his way, go through extra effort, spend extra time, provide extra needed attention. He was willing to assume the cost of the healing of this neighbor out of his own treasury, not out of someone else's pocket. He did not challenge the wounded man. He did not attempt to repute, discuss, or refute the image that this wounded man had of him as a villain. He did not try to change the mind of his neighbor. He simply poured upon the wounds of this neighbor unconditional love without any expectations of any form of returns. Most of the times, our neighbors can be someone that we serve without knowing his name or even seeing him or knowing about his existence. We might serve this person and may never ever see them again and may uh, God reveal the action of the unconditional love that we have done toward this person, not even in this life, but in the life to come.